Hi everybody, Levi Clay here and today I am going to talk to you about Paul Gilbert and his history with Ibanez and this is in celebration of his new release, the PGM 333. So that's to celebrate 30 years with Ibanez. Now, I'll be completely honest with you, this video isn't scripted, I don't usually script my videos anyway. I am doing this 90% from memory because Paul Gilbert was always a big influence on my playing growing up. He was my favorite guitar player for a very, very long time. In fact, fun fact for you, my business, Levi Clay Transcriptions, was originally called Miss Mistreater Transcriptions when I first started it, and that was because I was known online as Miss Mistreater, and that's purely based on the Racer X song because my home on the internet was the Racer X forums, rest in peace. Anyway, so I was a huge fan of the PGM model growing up. I've owned a few of them in my time, so I thought it would be fun to talk about those particular guitars. But before we do the history, why don't we just pay careful attention to the new model, which, as I say, is that PGM 333. Now, as you can see from the pictures on screen, this is being released at NAMM this year. Beautiful, beautiful looking guitar, incredibly classy looking. I'm not entirely sure what you'd call the finish on that. It's kind of got like a grey sparkle and it's perfectly offset with the gold absolutely stunning and it has those three mini humbuckers in it which again super cool I'm a big fan of the reverse headstock uh, I'm not entirely sure why reverse headstocks have always kind of grabbed me so it's nice to see that on this and of course uh, fixed bridge yeah so just absolutely stunning guitar and after 30 years with the company uh, I think it's only fair that Paul gets something pretty special and it's nice to see that he went with something that pays homage to his roots with the company the PGM rather than the fireman models which you know are cool but Come on, PGMs, Racer X, yeah. Snakebite, if you could um if you could hit Paul up with another email, that would be great. Anyway, so before we talk about the first released guitar, it's worth mentioning the prototyping that went into the uh you know the release of his signature model. There was of course the uh Tele Savalas. Is that how you're pronouncing that? And that was played on Intense Rock 1. That strange pink looking guitar, again, you can see it on screen now. That was, uh, yeah, uh, you know, one of the first custom shop Ibanez guitars that Paul received. He was playing the 550s, and, you know, I've owned many 550s for the same reason. But it's, it's worth mentioning, actually, there was another guitar that was almost, I mean, I say was almost released. He was absolutely playing this guitar, and that's a PGM that was a kind of like a, a road flare red with blue F holes on it. Now I've not pulled up a picture of this, uh, so I can't tell you for certain that it had three pickups in it. That's memory, that may not be the case, but the thing that's worth mentioning about this particular guitar is it actually had a scalloped fretboard. So Paul was certainly experimenting with scalloped fretboards around late 80s and, and early 90s. Ultimately, when he did release his first signature guitar with the company in 1989, the PGM 100. Now this, an iconic guitar, I have owned one of these. I love this guitar. In fact, there was actually an anniversary model that they released in 2009. Oh my God, that's 10 years ago now. Uh, yeah, stunning guitar, you know, blue, pink, uh, F-holes on it. The humbucker single hum configuration, shark tooth inlays, regular headstock, and a Floyd Rose tremolo. Now, ultimately, this would be the reason why I actually moved away from that guitar and ended up getting another guitar. I got this guitar and couldn't get on board with the Floyd Rose tremolo and the setup that went into that. So, beautiful guitar, and that was, you know, the the obvious one that you're going to see in the videos to songs like um, "Addicted to That Rush" by Mr. Big. So, yeah, this is, you know, start of Mr. Big guitar. Moving on from there, and actually, you'll get a feel for the naming convention here. You have the 100, the 200, the 300, the 400, so on and so forth. There's some offshoots, but yeah, for the most part, that's what you need to know. So the 200, again, another interesting one, because there's certainly examples of this guitar coming with humbucker single hum configuration for the pickups, but the production model was a uh, three humbucker guitar. And if memory serves me right, it was a fixed bridge. Let me just pull that up. Yeah, fixed bridge, but Paul's personal one with the humbucker single hum had uh, a Floyd Rose tremolo in there. So again, we have to look at that, maybe assume this was just a color variant that he had had on the PGM 100 and then when they decided to release it around 1990 uh, they decided to go for something slightly different three humbuckers and a fixed bridge maybe that was when he started experimenting with the fixed bridge I, I wouldn't know about asking him of course 
Now, beautiful guitars when they were new, and actually some people liked the way these particular guitars aged, but there was something about the lacquer in these guitars when exposed to too much sunlight, they yellowed. And when you add yellow to blue, what do you get? You get green. Yeah, so older versions of this guitar, they, they are a how can I describe this? Like a swamp green now. It's kind of cool, you know, uh, it'd be nice to see one in the flesh in its original colouring. I have never seen one in the flesh in its original colouring because you know, I got into Paul Gilbert much later on in his career because I'm younger. Um, but yeah, to see one of these in the flesh in its original colour, yeah, I'm sure that would be a spectacle. So that's the 200. Moving on from there, you've got the 300. Now I wanted to say that anything with a three in the front will generally mean the guitar is white. Now this is the, uh, I was going to say iconic, but Paul, I, what I really mean is Paul probably played this one for the longest period of time. Now this is the classic white with the black F holes. And this was released in a few different variants with the original one, again, 1990, 1991, about 91, um, white, black F holes, maple neck, reverse headstock, very cool, and a Floyd Rose. Now over time, this would essentially be his you know, his go-to guitar. And he ended up having a fixed bridge put on this and that's the PGM 301. So that one, I could be totally wrong on this. I think that one was on sale for the longest period. I've certainly seen a lot of those in the flesh, very common guitars. There was a tw uh, yeah 20th anniversary version. I've got the stats on this one. 20th anniversary version of that, which was released in 2009. Sorry, that's the 300 reissue. So with a Floyd Rose. And there were budget model versions of this. There was a PGM 30 and also a PGM 3. Again, I think of these as being Asian market guitars. Both of those had um, dark rosewood, potentially ebony, but dark fingerboards on them. And yeah, cheaper. Again, I'd never seen one of those in the flesh. And then, of course, there is the Micro, the 31, which is you know a mini guitar with that white colouring. Uh, in all honesty, the 301 never really did anything for me uh, because so many of them were available. You used to see them everywhere. Now, here's where things become a little bit more interesting. The PGM 400. Now, I owned one of these guitars. Absolutely stunning guitar made for the Japanese market and Japanese market only. Very similar to the 500, which we'll talk about in a second. But essentially, this guitar, uh, like I say, Japanese market only, I believe. This was a, a kind of um, sparkle red finish with creamy uh, F-holes on it. Humbucker single hum configuration, regular headstock. And the thing that was really interesting about this one is it had a, a vintage style tremolo on it, which I locked down, of course, because tremolo is not really for me, uh, but very, very cool. And the other thing that's worth noting about this guitar is it had a finished back on the neck. So the back of the neck was also red on this. Uh, I miss that guitar very dearly. I wish that I still had that guitar. And you wanna know something tragic? I traded this guitar for an Ibanez RG550 uh, desert yellow anniversary one. I got royally screwed on that deal. I don't know why I did that. I mean, I do know why I did that. I felt that I needed to move away from being identified by Paul Gilbert and his guitars. So I traded a beautiful guitar for another guitar that was associated with Paul Gilbert's history. Questionable decision, Levi. Now, before doing the 401, I just want to go on to the 500. So the 500 looks very much like the 400, same basic color scheme. This one has a reverse headstock on it. This one was a fixed bridge. And now, as far as I'm aware, this one was available worldwide. Uh, very cool guitar. This one had a natural back on the neck, though, I believe, as well. So a natural back on the neck, a reverse headstock, and a fixed bridge. That's really the difference between the 400 and the 500. The 400, definitely a, a rarer piece, uh, if you like. Uh, the 400 also had very odd machine heads on them that were locking, but you locked them with a coin on the front. You sort of, yeah, very, I sent it in for some work to be done on it and uh, at one point, and when restringing it, the guys had no idea how to restring it, and that was rather embarrassing. Embarrassing. Um, I also remember breaking one of the tuners on that by over tightening it. So um, yeah, maybe not the maybe not the best design. So it's the 400 and the 500. Now in 2009, oh Levi, would you shut up? See guys, I told you this was improvised. You see, the guitar I'm actually thinking of here was never released. The guitar I'm thinking of was an orange PGM, which you can see Paul Gilbert playing around the Get Out of My Yard era. There's a great concert in Japan where he played this for the entire concert. Very very cool guitar, but was actually never released that was you know mid 2000s before the 401 came out so sorry about that
He released the PGM 401. Now, I'm not entirely sure what was up with the naming convention of this one because it's not really a variant on the 400, right? Uh, this was the Tobacco Burst guitar. So, Tobacco Burst with black F holes. Uh, yeah, not really for me. But again, this one was readily available. I think uh, when I see this, I kind of think like Mr. Big when they did their reunion tour. This was one of the main guitars that he was playing for a lot of that. So yeah, very cool. Now we're moving away, interestingly, from the RG shape. We're moving on to the PGM 600, which was available in 96. This one is actually an Iceman, an Ibanez Iceman, which of course is a classic shape. And uh, that's what you'll remember when you think of this. Uh, if you think, uh, what are they, was it Guitars from Mars? Is that what, what they called that? The, the Japanese only instructional DVDs. I have those over there. There's one where he's wearing like a, a sports jersey on the on the cover. The second one where he's wearing the sports jersey and he's holding one of these. So this is a blue uh, Iceman guitar with kind of uh, like orangey uh, F-holes with white binding on them. Again, not really my cup of tea because such an outlandish shape. And you didn't really see Paul really play this guitar, but you know, it was available. From there, you have the PGM 700. Again, this is quite a rare one. This was only available for the one year in 1996. This one is a violin-shaped body, so uh, or a cello-shaped body, I guess. It's somewhere between. It's definitely bigger than a violin. It's bigger than a viola, but smaller than a cello. Now, again, Paul played this one on the... Uh, I'm sure it's Guitars from Mars. I'm sure it's Guitars from Mars, but it would be embarrassing if it's not. Again, a Japanese-only instructional video did a classical thing for young guitar, uh, and that's featured on the cover of this. He's wearing a green jacket, and yeah. But you also may have seen this one, if memory serves me correctly, on the Racer X Snowball of Doom live DVD. He is playing this guitar on the song Godzilla uh, with a 66 on the bottom because he makes a joke about that. Uh, yeah, again, I can't really get on board with this one because of the outlandish shape. So that's the 700. Now the 800, this is definitely like getting heavier era Racer X. This one uh, was extremely popular actually among the Racer X fan base. This was one that everybody seemed to want a reissue of. And as I have said on my channel many times before, I don't like natural wood finishes. So this guitar unfortunately is not really for me uh, because it has a natural wood finish. Ugh. Uh, but it does have a reverse headstock, so I will give it that. That's the 800. There was an AEP, which is a kind of variation on that. Uh, I don't actually know all that much about that guitar. I know it was released uh, a few years ago, which was beyond the point where Paul Gilbert was a big influence on my playing, so it wasn't something I took a huge interest in. He also had the PGM 900, which was an Ibanez Talman model. Now, I always wanted a Talman based on my obsession with Noodles, the guitarist from The Offspring, when I was younger. But yeah, Paul Gilbert's Talman, not really for me. Uh, again, I've never seen one of these in the flesh. I'm not entirely sure how rare they are. I make the assumption this was Japanese market. I could be totally wrong on that one. Like I say, I personally haven't seen one in the flesh. Now there are one, two, yeah, there, I guess there's two more that are worth mentioning. The 10th anniversary, which again, natural wood finish, not not really my cup of tea. But the one that's really worth mentioning is the 90th Ham. So that's the 90th Hoshino anniversary model. This is a stunning, absolutely stunning guitar, like a royal blue. It's got a fancy binding around it, white F holes, you know, fancy binding on the neck, reverse headstock. This is a really appealing guitar to me. Um, I've never owned one. I know a couple of guys that own one though. So um, yeah, very cool guitar. Again, I don't know how well they age, uh, but new, they looked absolutely stunning. It was absolutely something I wanted to get my hand on. Hand? Hands on. So that's essentially your rundown of the PGM models. Of course, there were the Fireman models, or are the Fireman models, and there are a fair few of those. I can't really get too into the nitty gritties of the uh, nitty gritties, yeah, the nitty gritties of the naming conventions for those. But when I think of the Fireman, you've got the uh, the Karina, the natural Karina finish one which is kind of cool, uh, and then the red one, which he played a fair amount. There's also a double humbucker one that he played uh, without a scratch plate on it. There's a white one, and if I think of like the Mr. Big Live at Budokan anniversary DVD, there's a weird kind of blue one with, I th it's some sort of Japanese drink with bottle cap. 
I don't know much about this guitar. I don't know what it's promoting, but yeah, again, very Paul Gilbert, very, you know, tongue in cheek, having a bit of fun. So there we go. What do you guys think? What is your favorite PGM model? I have to be honest, it's hard for me to to let go of the fact that I owned a 100 and I wish I didn't get rid of it. And I owned a 400 and I really wish I didn't get rid of it. If I could have any PGM model, I guess it would be a 400 because I'd want my old 400 back. But I will be honest, this new one, the 333, the 333, PGM 333, I think it's a stunning looking guitar. I really do. And it's nice to see I don't think any of Paul's other signature models ever had the mini humbuckers in. So it's nice to see him doing something different. You know, great looking, uh, great looking neck with the inlays on it. What are they, trapezoids? Um, it just, yeah, stunning. Well done, Paul. You've knocked that one out of the park. Uh, much congratulations to you. So there you go, guys. That is a brief rundown. Was it brief? How long have I been going for? 15 odd minutes. Talking about the PGM models. Uh, Paul Gilbert's iconic Ibanez guitars. And I do hope that you have enjoyed that. And if you have, please leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. I would love to know what your favorite PGM model is. And uh, if you can think of anyone that's had a more iconic list of signature guitars in their career, I really don't think it gets much better than Paul's. There's something for everyone in there. Very, very cool. So lastly, I just want to say a huge thank you to these people over here. These are supporters of mine over on Patreon.com. You guys allow me to keep doing things like this. So thank you very much. You guys are awesome. I'm looking over there. There's actually no one over there. That's my door. But you can see names there, right? <laughs> so thanks very much, guys. I really do appreciate it. Um, if you would like to support the channel, you can do so by uh, checking me out on Patreon up here. You can subscribe by clicking this button down here, and you'll see two more of my videos here and here. Please do share them with your friends. Share them with your enemies. Share them with your loved ones. Uh, they may enjoy them. They may not. But I'm sure... I'll enjoy them not enjoying them. Much love, guys, and I will see you for another video soon. Laters.